Wow, this is like the most comfortable I've been able to make everything in terms of like how I set up this shot. Specifically now, my legs feel like they can actually stretch out a little bit, but feel very relaxed. I'm fine. <coughs> ah. <laughs> wow. That was quick. I just got to think that this whole week was quick. We're already on Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. Um, well, let's get to my little bit high of act of kindness. Um, I guess my low is, and I swear, and if any of you have been sick recently, and have family members who are also sick in this general period of time, or any general period of time, like, let me know if, like, you know what's going on here, but I swear, like, every single member of my family within the last week has been sick. And now that things are feeling better physically, there's a level of tension. And not the good kind of tension either. I mean, maybe I guess it's just a phase of it. Maybe. I mean, Needless to say, ever since Monday, I've been feeling loads better. Like, day by day, it's just been, you know, that progression. So, as of right now, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, my high was I did get to see my folks last night. I got to play with my nephews last night. That was a lot of fun. A bit unruly. I said they were a bit unruly. Toward like the very end. But then again, they're always like that. You know, especially like my youngest, because apparently, hold on. That was weird, I'm itching my back. My youngest nephew didn't want to go to my mom's house. And by the time everything was done, he didn't want to leave. But, you know, it's just, uh, it's just one of those things, kids. Kids are always indecisive like that. I'm not going to fault them for that. And, uh, surprisingly, last night, we had Chinese for dinner. Hmm. Bill Wilson's had Chinese for dinner. We all split an order of dumplings. Um, we got, we all got orders of a Duracell's chicken. My folks got fried rice. I got white rice. Uh, I had an egg roll. My mom had an egg roll. So yeah, it was pretty sad overall. Although, um, that being said, if, um, if any of you in, if any of you ever come to like the Big Flats area, go to Shanghai Express for Chinese. It's amazing. Okay, because it's the place I'm going to. I think it's the place I've ordered Chinese from the most my entire life. And we, actually, I've got, um, I live by this one place called a Happy Family that's just right up the road for me. But, yeah, Shanghai is pretty good. What's well, take out, man? You're supposed to take it home with you. Uh, let's see. My act of kindness was obviously helping my mom watch my nephews. Although, um, I did accidentally scare my mom, but it was perfectly fine because, uh, I mentioned how my nephews were all, um, a bit unruly when it came to getting ready to go home. My youngest, the very same one who didn't want to go home, was actually the first one to be ready. And... <laughs> since he was ready, I decided to 
put him in his car seat. My mom shows up with the twins in the other room. And I'm in the garage, by the way. And she's like, Nick, do you have him? Like, yeah, I do. We're putting him in his car seat. So, yeah. Free. I, I, that expression didn't really sound do it just which was she was actually a little more freaked out than I made her sound just then. So, yeah, all in all, it was a pretty solid day. Um, it rained yesterday. And I just realized we did pretty solid on not having any snow. But since I'm still feeling a little bit of the winter blues, how about I heat myself up with talking about some hot ones? Okay, so, uh, so Bob Odenkirk was on hot ones yesterday. And, huh, I need to look up more of Bob Odenkirk's stuff. To be sure. Maybe I should check out Lucky Hanks because he's definitely, because I knew who Bob Odenkirk was, but I didn't know him, if that makes sense. And that's what Hot Ones helps me with. It helps me know the person eating the wings. That's not Sean Evans, obviously. Um, so, in his, in his episode yesterday, he talked about how in Lucky Hank, he has to play like a cantankerous, like English teacher. And he explained how cathartic it was to do something like that. Considering that for any uh, Breaking uh, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul fans out there, he saw. So. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a nice change of pace for him. Uh. He talked about how, where he got his comedic inspiration. Specifically, uh, watching Monty Python, Day Down at Large, The Two Ronnies. He also talked about his favorite Chicagoland regional commercial, which is Schmirler Ford. Probably a car sales guy, you know, Ford is, you know, car. Um... But uh, yeah, he's from Chicago, which, you know, uh, one of my best friends from Journey Pauling is also from Chicago. Actually, a few best friends from Journey Pauling are from Chicago. Chicago's a great city. Definitely need to, I need to go to Chicago sometime. I mean, when I'm famous and I have the money for it, I will. Hmm. Um, he talked about the genuine pros and cons in playing a one-man show versus any other genre. And it really fascinated me how when you think about a one-man show, there was only one director, there's only one actor, one director, one producer, and that's you. Like, if I'm my own one-man show, I'm my own actor, I'm my own director, I'm my own producer. Nothing else. Believe it or not, when you see big productions on stage or even in movies, it's actually really hard to get groups of people together. I mean, small groups of people, say, maybe less than a dozen is probably the most manageable. But any more than that, it gets extremely difficult to run a production. So, for those of you who work on a one-man show, you know, I salute you. Which also leads into a, which leads into a wing I'll get into later, he talked about. But, uh, other things he talked about was how early he recognized Chris Farley in terms of, like, how funny he is as a performer. He got within 100 feet of him. Because he saw him and he's got something. We all know what that something is. The kind of something where you look at that person and you say, that person is interesting. Or, that person is intriguing. 
over that person is funny. Something that catches your eye and makes you think, okay, let's see where this goes. It is like that kind of logic. And I actually really kind of like that. Um, he talked about the writers versus the audience in terms of what they regard as being funny. And well, and it makes sense because when a writer writes something, it's, um, you know, and it could sound funny. And that writer would make, and maybe whatever that writer wrote is brought to stage and people got to try and act it out and the audience has to react to that. Their reactions aren't really going to be lining up 100%. And that's true. See, I'm learning, I learned so much from these Hot Ones episodes. It's, it's unbelievable. And also the venue matters a lot too. Like where it is. Like the time and place, you name it. Like New York City, the Chicago. I was about to say the Windy City or the second city, but no, I'll just say Chicago. Los Angeles. Those, those places. Uh, Oh, actually, speaking of one man show earlier, um, the value of a bomb. Because let's be honest, performers bomb on stage. Which, that's actually the one thing I've always been worried about for me. Yeah, I could perform myself, but I always feel so nervous. And I worry that I am going to fail. I got to move past that. You know? It teaches, you know, it teaches bravery. You know, like, and when you bomb, it really just gives you a sense of, you know what? I'm not that different from anybody else. Which is a good mindset. Full disclosure, I don't think I'm much different from anyone else. I happen to do things that other people do. That other people, I happen to do things that other people do not do. But that doesn't make me any less of a person. So there you go. Uh, Jimmy, alright, uh, the, the difficulty of uh, how hard it is to, the difficulty of remaining in a character's headspace for a long period of time, specifically Jimmy's treatment of Howard, probably in Better Call Saul, I suppose, or maybe it's Breaking Bad, I don't know. Yeah, full disclosure, I've never seen Breaking Bad, or Never Call Saul. Yeah, I'm behind on a lot of things. I'm also, full disclosure, I've never even seen Stranger Things either. I should probably get to do with that. Um, when Bob Odenkirk acted in Nobody, that action movie that came out in like 2020, they talked about how, like what makes a good Hollywood fight scene. And I actually do know a little bit of this. Because Bob Odenkirk mentioned you need long shots, you know, the actors have to do their own fighting, they need to stay in character and show emotions. All that has to be true. But here's another thing, and this is actually something I learned from, believe it or not, doing Introductory to Dance in college. It was the last college course I ever took, by the way. And one thing that legit changed how film was done was when dancing started being integrated into film and the better way to show it all was to get a full body shot of everything so that way the audience can see everything that the actor is doing so yeah it does go in that whole long shot own fighting type logic but you really wouldn't have that kind of but without, you know, dance, you really wouldn't have that sort of analogy. So, I think that's really cool. Um, let's see. Oh, there's actually this one place in Chicago called Ed DeBevix. And it's known for being notoriously rude to their customers. Like, you walk in, like, sit down! You know, like, basically, you're supposed to be rude to the customers. That's part of the fun. 
And Bob just really wouldn't do that. You know, he, he didn't feel right to be rude to other people, you know? That I do get. I tell you what, for people who work at like Ed DeBevix or Wiener Circle, that's also in Chicago, where you have to be just rude to customers like all the time, like, kudos to you to make that look like an art form. I can tell you right now, I'd never be rude to people like that. Admittedly, working in a restaurant never really is my thing. But if it was, I certainly would never treat customers that rudely. <laughs> he also talks about how the world's smallest Sunday is underrated. Portion control, guys. He's not entirely wrong about that. I can go for a Sunday right now. Too bad National... Right, National Ice Cream for Breakfast Day happened in February. That was the coldest day we had that year, by the way. Anyway, um, right, now we get to the last app. And I love when Sean began asking the question with a quote from the late, great Robin Williams. A quote that I have written down right here. Comedy starts as a spew, a kind of explosion, and then you sculpt it from there if at all, comes out. Uh, sorry. Comedy starts as a spew, a kind of explosion, and then you sculpt it from there, if at all, and it comes out of a deeper, darker side. And I love how Bob Odenkirk translated it. And I actually alluded to this when I mentioned the clue that first, that Instagram, the first big feast Instagram always puts up before they reveal who the guest is. And Bob Odenkirk said, comedy is finding things in both people and the world that you hate and you make fun of that. And you know what? That's 100% true. It is. I mean, I'm no expert on comedy or anything, but from my experience, I've seen three things that matter most when, you know, coming up with a joke or regarding whether or not something is funny. And I call them three INGs. That's knowing, as in knowing all the information about, like knowing context, being smart about what you're doing, thinking things over before you're doing it, knowing. Timing, which, come on, timing, everyone knows timing is key. And suffering, yes, suffering is a huge part of comedy. That's why you get stuff like slapstick, someone's in pain. Do it with someone doing stand-up, someone's being a complete idiot of themselves. And everything in between. That is funny, because there is some degree of suffering involved. Sometimes a situation can be bad and later you can laugh at it. Although sometimes the situation is probably so bad to the point where you're probably almost going to die and you laugh about how you almost died later. Hey listen, that's dark, but it still fits. So I definitely learned a lot about comedy in this episode. So Thank you, Bob Odenkirk. And thank you to the good people over at First Week Feast and High Ones for another great episode. I hope you all liked this video. If you did like, subscribe to your channel, follow me on social media. As always, I'm very home this video for all of you guys wanting to join today. It will be a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Friday. And remember, if any of you guys want to talk to chat, I'm always going to be here to London and I'll always hear back. Take care and make good choices. 607 all day, baby.